I'll start recording for everyone who's watching remotely, um, and I should probably pause the lo-fi as well. Okie dokie. Um, so welcome everybody to CS196. Yeah, I know. Uh, I couldn't find anywhere to put me else. Um, to CS196 lecture number 14, but I'm not actually sure it's 14. That makes it our uh, seventh week, which is kind of crazy. We're really, we've been kind of going at this for a while. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, back end one. So, you know, if you remember to, you know, so, so long ago, we talked about front end. Now we're going to be talking about back end. After that, we're talking about databases. And so without further ado, we'll get started. So our objectives for today is kind of introduce back end and introduce how we're going to be working with back end using this Flask library. Um, in bro, uh, people say yikes in Twitch chat. I think that I went down. Um, so then we'll talk about kind of the basics of this thing called routing, get and post requests and what those are. And then we'll go through one really cool example that I'm excited about. Um, and hopefully you will be excited when we do it. So if we review very briefly, we discussed actually before we review, uh, I do want to mention one thing about the uh, debugging homework. Uh, we know that uh, it is pain. Uh, and so we've turned, um, Matt can talk, I think, a little bit more about this, and we'll make an announcement at some point, but we've turned a large part of the debugging homework into extra credit, and if you do uh, complete it, I think that you get a little bit of a bonus as well. Um, I think Matt will talk about kind of the specifics of that in more detail, uh, but yeah, basically. Uh, it's, it's a tough homework. Uh, it's a new one this semester, so, you know, we're always learning. Um, He'll announce it in chat later. Pain is not the four letter. <laughs> um, so we discussed front end, what the website says, looks, and does. And now we're going to be talking about back end. So what exactly is back end? Back end's the code that's going to be handling serving web pages to users that want it. And so in the past, when we opened our front end website, all we're really doing is reading from a file, but we're using Chrome to read the file, right? Uh, now we actually want to be able to open someone else's website, right? And so we have to answer some important questions like how do we get that file? How do we know which file is the correct one to read if there's multiple HTML files for a single um, maybe web page? Um, how, what if we need to pre-process any data? And so, you know, get user account information, right? What if we need cookies, interacting with other data sources, interacting with APIs, uh, perform some calculation, redirect the users to a different website, perform, you know, basically any task. All of these are things that we have not been able to do thus far before the page loads. We've been able to kind of do it a little bit in a cheaty way with JavaScript um, to, you know, execute kind of some code when the page loads. Um, but sometimes, you know, that's not always sufficient uh, because kind of an important property is that anything you don't want the user to see needs to be in the back end. Um, so, you know, that can include API keys, sensitive account information, other web pages that they don't have access to, proprietary data and more. Right. And so I think kind of a basic easy example of this is uh, on the server side, when you load something like Gmail, uh, it's checking to see what user you are. And if you are not the user whose email you're trying to access, uh, you're not going to receive those emails. You're, you're not going to be able to open those. Right. If we tried to do that in JavaScript, what we would be doing is sending that information over anyway and then saying, like, oh, wait, no, never mind. You can't see this. Well, you know, the user already has it somewhere on the computer. And if they really wanted to, they could probably sleuth it out. Um, and so, you know, when we have kind of security stuff we need to worry about, uh, a lot of the times the back end really does become the, the way to do that and having server side code. Um, can you all think of any other stuff that, you know, we don't want the user to see? Um, you know, there's tons uh, of stuff we should do on the server side. Um, yeah. So uh, you're like, okay, use this, very cool. Uh, how do I actually start writing the code? Um, I thought I fixed that bullet point. I remember going back and fixing the bullet point. Uh, anywho. 
um, how do we actually start writing this code? How do we actually do the backhead, right? We know it's to, you know, control sensitive information and serve web pages and X, Y, Z, um, production quality minus minus. Um, we use this thing called a backend framework. Uh, and so here's just kind of some of the most popular backend frameworks. Um, these are a variety of different languages, um, but we've decided that we only want to write Python because uh, I don't, we're not going to introduce another language in this class. Uh, we already talk about enough, um, though if you all want to learn something like Ruby on Rails, uh, just let me know. Um, so we're not going to do any of these, uh, and that leaves Django and Flask as the two kind of Python uh, backend libraries. And uh, last semester, uh, they taught, Sammy and Rohan taught both Django and Flask, and uh, nobody liked Django, no one liked the Django homework, and so instead we're just going to teach Flask this semester, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so what is Flask exactly? Flask is a lightweight micro framework. Uh, for, you know, kind of web development in Python and backend serving in Python. Um, so it's lightweight, and so it's kind of much higher level. You probably don't have to go as far into the weeds as you would have to with Django. Um, now I'm going to throw two more things on here, and you're really not expected to know them, but I'll make a call back to them later. Um, it uses a WSGI called WorkZug. Um, which is German for something. I would assume work is German for work. Uh, and then it uses Jinja templating. Um, and then basically what this is saying is these are two other Python libraries out there uh, that perform two different tasks. This one, Web Server Gateway Interface, um, is actually going to be kind of the workhorse behind this hosting we're about to talk about, or the routing we're about to talk about. And Jinja is the workhorse behind uh, this thing called templating that we'll uh, soon see. So let's just see a basic example. We'll kind of go line by line. Of course, in many things, the first step is to actually import it. Um, and so that also means, you know, being able to pip install it or whatnot. Um, so we'll import it and then we'll create a, an app by instantiating this Flask class, say app equals Flask name. Uh, bonus points if anyone can tell me what name is or why we put name there. Basically, it's just like linking it to this uh, this file, like how it's being run. Um, and then we're going to create this thing called a route. And, you know, I know I'm kind of like throwing this all at you. Um, maybe if you have some experience in this, you know, uh, you're maybe a little bit more familiar with this. But really, don't worry too much. We're going to be looking at this a lot. And so uh, hopefully we'll clear it up. But let's kind of look at this line by line. Mm, production quality. Let's go back one more time. Mm, production quality. Moving arrows. So the first line we have here is what we call a decorator, just because it starts with an at. Um, and what it's saying is, hey, I want to build this route for when I visit this URL, right? And when I visit this URL, this is the function that I want to call. I want to call this hello world function. And, you know, you might say uh, this this isn't a URL. If I put this in my browser, nothing happens. Um, that's correct. This is uh, kind of the end of the URL for us. So, you know, we would have, uh, you know, myurl.com slash nothing. Uh, we call this kind of the index page. Um, I'm actually not sure where the terminology index page comes from, but that's what it's referred to as. And so in this situation, we'll call this hello world function, and this hello world can be named whatever you want. Um, it does have to be named, you know, unique. It, it is a function. Nice, Professor Google for the, the name variable. Yeah, so it's the module name, exactly. And then uh, in this situation, we're just going to return hello world. So we have the function name and we have the return and then we'll call app.run and what app.run is going to do is it's actually going to kind of create this flask server that's going to be hosting these uh, web pages. Uh, so, you know, what does this mean? Uh, what is exactly a route? We're saying app.route is the route my tour de quad, which is my favorite bike route that goes around campus visiting all of the quads. No, of course not, though it is the Tour de Quad, which is a very nice bike route on campus, visiting all the quads. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's uh, a route is a definition of what the server should do uh, if someone uses a specific HTTP request at a URL that you control. Um, so if someone uses a specific HTTP request at a URL that our server controls, let's break that down. So URL, we know what that is, right? That's that's mywebsite.com slash, right? So if someone goes to mywebsite.com slash nothing, the index URL, uh, 
what do we want to do? Well, you know, they're also using a specific HTTP request, and we don't actually know what those are, and so let's introduce them. Um, as you can see here, this is not me having bad production quality. We actually just care about getting post way more than any of these, uh, and so I decided to make them big and these small. So HTTP requests are uh, a type of request that you can do to a server, um, HTTP just being kind of the protocol in which you're creating your request, right? Hypertext transfer protocol. And so the big two ones are get, which allows us to get data from a specified source. Um, what you do usually is you kind of have the query string being the URL, and so you'll say get URL. Uh, often you're getting HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files for a specific web page, but uh, you know, uh, very often we'll use APIs that allow us to get other information like data. Uh, you know, kind of a popular one is I'm sure there's a million weather APIs out there where you can get you know the current weather for a specific location. And you know, once again, this is saying uh, if you you're basically asking the server to get a certain file, right? And if we go back to here, you're asking the server for the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files associated with this index, with this index URL, I should say. Uh, additionally, we have post, which is kind of the other way around. Post is what we usually use when we want to send data to a server. So we're the kind of the user of the server. We do some action and we want to upload that data to a server um, to create a record, you know, make a blog post, uh, update a database, you know, many, many things. Um, but anytime you're sending information to the server, a post is usually the way to do that. Um, post requests have to have the data in the body of the request, so just keep that in mind. Um, there's also put, head, delete, patch, and options. Uh, we aren't going to talk about these very much because no one uses them very much. Uh, there are, you know, specific use cases for them. Um, you know, delete is for when you're deleting stuff out of a database. Um, the rest, I probably can't tell you off the top of my head. I remember put is somewhat related to post, but uh, has like some different property. Um, when in doubt, Google it, right? Um, when in doubt, Google it. Great. Okay, so let's do a quick quiz. Uh, so we updated our bot, and so uh, um, I'm relearning what to do. So we're going to say pull create for uh, routing. Okay, so if you go to pull bot, you should be able to react. Uh, remember this, you know, this is how we track attendance. So if you're here watching this, then go do it. Uh, if you're watching this recorded, then it should be on Prairie Learn. So let's say the two scenarios. First, we're watching this stream, right? Maybe you're on Twitch. Uh, maybe you're watching this YouTube video recorded. What type of request is going to happen if you refresh your page? A Git or a post? And then next, we fill out a feedback form saying how awesome this lecture is. Uh, what type of request are we sending when we press submit to our form? And so I'll give everyone just a moment here. Um, in the meantime, I'll talk briefly, you know, if we remember to think back to uh, front end one, basically what we did is we dumped a ton of information all at once and then took the Thursday lecture to break it down into more fine pieces. Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit similar this time, which is uh, we'll, we'll kind of be introducing a lot of concepts right now and then be getting practice through it, through the homework and through the second lecture um, to maybe solidify some of these ideas, right? Um, you know, a big part of this is you all are honest students, and so I want to introduce you to kind of fun, new, cool ideas that maybe you won't be introduced to otherwise, right? And so a big one of those is, you know, backend uh, frameworks and, and being able to do this stuff. Because I know for me, I mean, I'm an EE major. Most of my work is in computer vision. Um, yet me knowing how to kind of create websites and, and host a website is one of the most valuable skills I have. Uh, it, it's super useful, and not a lot of people uh, who do what I do uh, know how to do that. So it's a it's a fun skill to have, kind of no matter what you go into. And you know, worst case, you make a portfolio web page for yourself. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close the poll. So if you haven't uh, reacted, I'm going to give you just probably five or ten more seconds now. I'm waiting for the delay to go through. So do the thing. If you have not already, closing the poll in three, two, one. Great. So let's see the results. Great. So vast majority of people putting two, 
get in post. That's correct. Um, some people put three as well. Uh, and let's kind of break down what's happening. So we're watching the stream. What type of request would happen when we refresh the page? Um, that's a get request, right? We're trying to get information from the server being the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. that are going to let you watch this stream, right? When you refresh the page, you're not uploading anything to the server. Uh, we fill out a feedback form and, you know, the server needs to keep track of the feedback form information or else it's, you know, kind of pointless if we don't keep track of it anywhere. And so what we're doing is we're actually uploading this feedback form to the server. And so uh, a, a post request would be best for this second one. So git and then post is the correct answer. Uh, okay, and I continue. Um, so get in post, number two is the correct one. Um, a quick, you know, maybe brain teaser is, you know, can we handle a form without using a post request? Can we handle a form without using any request? Uh, you know, how could you potentially? It's a little bit of a trick question, but not totally. So let's kind of come back to this basic example. Um, you all can think about that on, on your own free time, I guess. Um, but feel free to mention something in chat. Yes, you can. How? Okay, someone's typing. Suspense, yeah, truly. Um, we'll keep talking. Uh, so let's come back to this basic example. So when someone loads my URL, you know, the index URL, uh, we want to return hello world. We want to call the hello <laughs> No worries. No worries. We want to call the hello world function and return hello world. Um, we can, you know, using JavaScript, but at some point we're going to have to make a request to some server somewhere. Right, because we need to uh, communicate that the form has been filled out is the answer to that, by the way. Um, but you know, depending on how you handle get requests and post requests and the different ones, it could really kind of be any type of request. Uh, using different requests can sometimes lead to like some security issues, though. So let's test it. Um, what we'll do is we'll just run this Python file like any other Python file, Python server.py, uh, and we'll get this thing. This is what gets printed out. And so let's kind of just read this line by line serving Flask app server. So, you know, our, our server is being hosted. Uh, we're uh, hosting the production environment, even though it's a development server. Um, you know, there's uh, other flags you can pass in to have it be production ready. Um, we don't really care about those. Um, so debug mode is off and we're running on this URL right here. And so if we actually go to this in our browser, uh, we get hello world uh, just as a text in the kind of basic empty HTML page, hello world, right? So cool, uh, we've successfully kind of served a file uh, remotely to a user, uh, nice. But as you may be able to imagine, we can get fancier. And so we can return more than just a string that says hello world. In fact, we can return full HTML, right? And so we'll put this in H1 tags. We'll say hello world, uh, two exclamation points. And when we load this web page, you know, we, we see that it works. Uh, we can even route for different URLs. And so, you know, right now we're just kind of routing for that index URL. We don't necessarily have to route for just the index URL. We can route for a different one. So in this one, we'll say hello world. This one, we'll say hello Eustace. And we can see production quality GIF as we go between them. This text here changes. And again, I just want to take a second and kind of break down what's happening here. You know, what, what we're kind of seeing in English. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult, Matt, but I'm pretty sure the animated Lion King was better. Um, there are there are so, so many, I know. Um, you'll have to stay strong. I'm not a huge fan of the GIFs because of that, so we'll go back to here. Um, and so, you know, let's kind of look at this line by line. Uh, I want to create a route for my app that when someone goes to the index page, we call the hello world function. The hello world function will return this string, which is HTML, that will say hello world in h1 tags. That will get rendered on the page as hello world in h1 tags, just as you're seeing it here. It'll get placed in the body. And then here, uh, I want to create a route for my app for when people go to my URL slash Eustace. And, uh, you know, I want to call this hello Eustace function, which instead of saying hello world, it's going to say hello Eustace. Um, and so we can once again see the example here. So it's happening. We go to this URL, we handle the request, um, you know, quick, maybe not quiz question, but, you know, uh, fun question. You know, what, what type of re request is this when I'm actually loading these URLs? 
right? So when I type in slash Eustace and I press enter, uh, what, what am I doing? Uh-oh. Are we back? I do see that the stream died for a bit. It was just a second, though, it seems. Hopefully everything is back and alive and okay. I'll wait a moment just for people to respond. Yes, we're good. Okay. Um, and so I was asking basically. We're changing the body code when the path changes. Don't think of it like we're changing the body code. Think of it as we're serving a completely different HTML file, right? You do a git request and then store the form data in the URL by returning a redirect, executing server side code. These, what? No. Oh, uh, we are not using jQuery. Uh, yeah, so th this is kind of directly uh, a, a git request. We're just getting a different URL and returning different uh, text, right? A different URL page, basically. Um, and so we can even read files. Uh, I'm trying something new here. I'm putting breakpoints on lines that we changed. I actually don't like how it looks, but if this helps you all, then let me know. Um, but, you know, looking from this example to this example, what we did is we added this different import called render template. And uh, we added this line instead of saying, you know, return hello world, we're returning render template index.html. And so now all of a sudden we're actually returning an HTML file. And when we run it, oh, internal server error. Okay, so what's going wrong? Well, this is the error that we get in our console. Uh, Jinja2, uh, bonus points if anyone can tell me what Jinja was. Um, Jinja2 exceptions, template not found, index.html. Template, yeah. Um, of course, Jinja is kind of the templating backend that uh, uh, Flask uses. And so what do we do? You know, we have an error. Um, everything is, everything's bad. Our code isn't working. Our website's not being served. Do we panic? Um, you all had your debugging lecture very recently, and so I'll, I'll make this a non-rhetorical question. What would you do in this scenario? Ask Andy. Look at Andy over here. What would WWAD, what would Andy do? You would make a folder called templates? Well, okay, yeah, but you don't know that yet, all right? You have, an, you have to go to the docs to figure that out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to Google the error. We are going to copy and paste our error directly into google.com. And then why is that happening? That's so weird. Um, and then we're going to find a Stack Overflow post that says, hey, we need to put templates in the templates folder. And so then we're going to put templates in the templates folder. So index.html is, of course, a template. And so it will go from right here to inside of a templates folder. And again, server.py is what we're working with. Uh, sick, we're so good at this now. Let's try again. Um, we try again and you know our CSS isn't loading, our JavaScript isn't loading, our images aren't loading. Uh, okay, well now what? Well, uh, you know, same thing, Google it, find the error. Uh, the CSS and JavaScript files clearly aren't being linked. And when we go to the documentation of Flask, we find this. Uh, and so let's just very briefly read this static files dynamic web page applications also need static files static files being images javascript css that you know maybe affect the page but aren't going to change themselves right um, and so in order to do this we quote just create a folder called static in your package or next to your module and it will be available at slash static on the application to generate the urls for static files we will use the special static endpoint name URL for static file name equals style.css. Of course, for us, you know, we, we have demo.css, but let's fix it. So we'll take all of the things that are static uh, images, CSS files, JavaScript files, image, 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 and we'll put those in a folder called static. Next, we actually need to change the HTML to have the correct URL, right? And so um, we're literally going to create this string, and this is where we're going to introduce kind of the next. Uh, big idea and, and kind of the heart of Jinja, which is templating. And we're going to talk about templating a lot more and tons and tons of kind of fun and powerful things you can do with templating. Um, but for now, we're just going to see kind of how to do it. So basically, when you have an HTML page that you serve with this uh, 
render template function call, what we can do is have uh, temp we can treat it as a template and have certain things inside of it that uh, that will be auto filled, right? Uh, and so the way we do this is we surround what we want to be auto filled with these double curly braces. And so we'll go from this href equals demo.css to href equals double curly brace and then this exact line uh, except our file name is now different. Our file name is now demo.css because that's what we named our file. And so do you remember when we said, you know, Jinja uses templating? Well, this means Flask is going to automatically fill that in, and we just have to surround it with these handlebars. Um, there are other ways to do uh, uh, templating, and there's other formats that you can use templating in. Um, this is the handlebars format, hence the handlebars around the stuff you want to format. Um, but we'll talk about more of those on Thursday. And so what we do is we take the area that we want to fill in, that we want to kind of run Python code for and figure out what it's going to spit out. And we surround that with handlebars. We put that directly in the HTML. And when we call render uh, template, it will kind of figure that out for us. And so now we can read the file, or now we can uh, load the file. And it has the CSS and the HTML and the images are all linked. And everything is good in life, right? Wonderful. So. Uh, now we're going to kind of go, bleh, excuse me, <clears throat> just my water. Actually, let's take a moment and answer any questions. Um, so basically what we've done is we've kind of introduced this routing, uh, that allows us to load different pages and we've introduced templating, which allows us to kind of change these HTML pages dynamically. So, um, what, what do you understand about this? What do you not understand about this? Um, sometimes it can be a little bit hard because it's hard to know what you don't know, but is there any parts that you're all confused on? You know, uh, what exactly happened when we did this? How does this know how to do this? You know, stuff like that. I'll take a moment. I want to pause more during lectures to answer questions. I feel like sometimes I just, well, maybe that's the nature of online teaching, but... Who knows, maybe next semester will be uh, partially in person. I think that's what the university is partially pushing towards. Um, yeah, the only difference is instead of style.css, it's demo.css because our file is called demo.css uh, and theirs was called style.css. Otherwise, it's uh, exactly the same. You can actually, I think, I'm like pretty sure uh, there's some route that actually works here directly. Like you can do like dot dot slash styles slash demo dot CSS, but I know that that's actually, uh, that can break pretty easily. And so it, it's highly, highly suggested that you use this URL for, and it's very easy. Okay, so we'll continue. Name a moral kind of, uh, yeah, Tim. <laughs> um, okay, so this is kind of be, this is going to be kind of the big part of the rest of this lecture, which is we're going to be looking at another fun example. If we think back to front end one, we built the website. Uh, now, you know, let's build like 30 websites at once. Uh, you know, we know one portfolio page is very cool, but what about making a ton of portfolio pages all at once for a ton of different people? Well, you know, can we think of any, you know, place where we have maybe a list of uh, images of people and their um, names? Well, you know, CS196 staff is, I think, a great example. And so if we go to the staff page, image, name, image, name, image, name, image, name, right? These are all uh, wonderful examples for people who may or may not need um, portfolio pages. And so let's make some for everyone. So... Um, to kind of formalize this, we'll say let's make a portfolio page for everyone on CS196 staff all at once. Uh, we have the template for the portfolio page, so we'll be sticking with that. We just need a way to kind of get their name and their profile picture. Uh, quick note is that there's a ton of different ways to do this. I'm going to do it one way. It's probably not the best way. Um, I, I have thought of other, you know, different ways to do it, but, you know, we're going to learn this way because it is uh, talking about stuff that we are trying to learn about. And so this is how we will do it. If you all, you know, have a suggestion, you know, could we do it this way? Feel free to mention it in chat, but uh, we're going to be showing this way for maybe a good reason. Okay, so uh, I don't actually want to make 30 different routes uh, for each person. 
so let's not do that. Uh, and we can use this thing called a variable route to not have to do that. And so we do this by adding these angle brackets around the variable in the route itself. And so let's actually look at an example of this. So we'll say app.route slash name, uh, and we'll pass this as a parameter into the hello world function, and we'll say hello name, right? And so we'll look at a GIF, hello Eustace, hello Matt, hello Tim, hello Albert. You know, anything that we put here is going to get sent down there. Now, you know, if we put numbers there, it'll say hello 12345 or hello CS196. So there's uh, kind of no limit to it. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. You know, this is kind of how we create these variable routes. And so suddenly we've created uh, almost infinite routes at once um, with, you know, behavior that's a little bit different based on the route. Wow, that's a low quality GIF. Holy cow. Anyway, the next problem is that we actually need to get these images from the website. Uh, and this is a little bit harder than it seems sometimes. Uh, so what I did is I went to the website and I inspected Element and I just looked at some of the URLs of these images and I found that they basically all follow this structure. They say uh, CS196, CS Illinois, assets, staff pictures, file dot file or file name dot file extension. Uh, unfortunately, one thing that makes our life a little bit harder is these file extensions are not the same. Some of these are JPEGs, some of these are PNGs, some of them are uh, JPEG, which I'm actually not totally sure the difference between a JPEG and a JPEG, if anyone knows. Happy to learn. Uh, so file extensions aren't always the same. And, you know, a uh, fun little fact is if we look here, we have this assets folder. Uh, that's basically the same as our, st our uh, static folder. Uh, and so if you want to learn more, you can talk to someone on staff who works on the website. Um, of course, our website is fully developed and managed by our own CS196 staff. And so if you see anyone in the Discord with the uh, website role, feel free to, I guess, message them and say, teach me about the website. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we'll get a list of all the people on the staff page and their images. Uh, of course, we'll you know do this automatically. We're not going to hand code it because we're not we're not lame like that. Uh, and we also want this to work, you know, if, in case the staff members added, removed, changed, uh, you know, future semesters, stuff like that. Uh, we will check if the requested name is actually on the list. So, you know, if you go to URL for someone who's not on staff, we are, don't want to try to make a portfolio with them because we're not going to be able to. Uh, then we're going to pass their image and their name into the web page. JPEG and JPEG are the same, but JPG is from a time when three-letter extensions were the only acceptable extensions. But So why would they change it then if, they, if everyone already knew it? Okay, and so let's kind of pseudocode this a little bit. Uh, and so what we'll say is we'll import all of our stuff and we'll say hello world name, you know, list of name equals get list, and that'll get the list of names from the web page. Uh, if the name is in list of names, uh, image URL equals get image for that name, and then we'll return, you know, uh, some web page with the image and the name. Um, we'll end up adjusting the structure a little bit for clarity and making our lives easier, but, you know, this is uh, maybe not a great example of pseudocode because it's basically code, but we're not actually going to write it the same format, so. Um, so first step, let's get a list of all the people on the staff page. Well, uh, we're going to learn how to do it in Python using regex, but there are some kind of fun, exciting ways to do it in JavaScript. Uh, a lot of them, you know, kind of leveraging API-like uh, uh, approaches. So if you are interested in kind of, you know, doing a little bit of a brain teaser, you know, maybe we can discuss uh, near the end of lecture some approaches that we could do using JavaScript. And so either, you know, bring it up now or bring it up then, and we can think of some ideas on, on how would we, we would be able to do this using JavaScript because, you know, we're essentially getting the inner HTML of JavaScript elements. And so it, it feels like a JavaScript task, but we're not going to turn it into a JavaScript task. And instead, we're going to use our new friend regex. Um, Matt pronounces it regex, which is fine. You can pronounce it however you want. I'm going to pronounce it regex. Just know that we're talking about the same thing. Uh, and so let's actually look at kind of the code here. And so we have this people class, uh, and then you have the specific person. They have a card, they have a picture, and this is kind of the URL for their picture. And then you have their name over here. And uh, so let's start to build this. What, what catches our eye? We'll start first with the name, uh, which is down here. 
what what might we be able to regex? This is not a rhetorical question. Um, you know, you don't actually have to write regex in Twitch chat right now, but you know, give me a general pattern of what you may match, may attempt to match, in order to uh, get that string. Uh, one thing that's going to be pretty useful is capture groups, right? Don't forget that. Dot JPEG. Well, well. So first of all, we're we're thinking of uh, names right now, so we want to get kind of this line here and specifically this uh, text right here. So yeah, ba basically, I guess what I'm wondering is uh, if we were to try to write regex to match those names and to get a list of those names, uh, what would that regex look like? What approach would we use? For me. Uh, what I would think about is, you know, they're surrounded by this kind of unique tag, B, N, G, content, C, Q, O, C, 3, name, B. Um, just a quick note, this CQO does change occasionally when you refresh the page. And so, you know, we ha will have to change that a little bit differently. And so let's turn this into actual regex. So first, we're going to match uh, B, N, G, content, dash uh, directly. Those never change. And so we're going to look for that on the web page. Then we're going to look at three lowercase characters, uh, A through Z. And, you know, by refreshing the page, you can find, yes, that that works. Um, or at least it worked for the three times I refresh. Uh, then we're going to have dash C3 again, kind of matching that directly. We're going to do equals. Um, I don't like worrying about quotes. Of course, I'm pretty sure I would just need to escape character them. But instead, I just did any character twice uh, because I was lazy. And then again, we'll directly match this closing angle bracket. And we'll say any number of characters. Uh, any number of times, and we want to capture this. So A through Z, or uppercase A through Z, any number of times with the star, and we want to capture that name. I think you talked briefly about capture groups uh, in Matt's debugging, or Matt's regex lecture. Basically, this is saying, this is what we actually care about. The rest is just to find where this is. And then we'll directly match this uh, B, just keeping in mind that we have to escape this backslash, or escape the forward slash with a backslash. I can never remember which one's which. Um, yeah. So uh, additionally, we'll look at the images. You know, someone mentioned that the .jpg may work. Well, you know, if we look here, this one's JPEG, this one's JPEG. Um, there's more that are down there that are PNG. You'll just have to take my word for it. And so the pattern I see here is kind of that SRC equals dot dot slash 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 asset staff pictures uh, name dot JPEG. What's CQO for that? We had to regex it. It is literally just three randomly generated characters, I'm pretty sure. It is uh, the way that we have our website set up. It basically automatically generates these classes that the CSS is applied to or something like that. Um, I'm actually not like to, this is like very hardcore front end development that uh, is a little bit past me if I'm being honest. Well, you, you give custom attributes to HTML tags is what's happening. And so we make custom attributes for them. If you're interested, Google custom HTML attributes and the uses for it. I'm actually not 100% certain what the functionality of them are in this specific case. But it'd be interesting to learn about. So, um, you know, we'll kind of match this string. Um, before we look at the regex here, I just want to apologize. Because keep in mind, uh, period is a special character in regex, meaning any character. And uh, this slash is a special character in regex. And that means we have to escape character every single one of these. And so it's the most disgusting line of regex I think you'll ever see in your entire life. Backslash period, backslash period, backslash forward slash backslash. It looks like a bad mountain range. So I just want to apologize ahead of time for how ugly that line is. But the important part, if we ignore the, the ugly beginning, is that we're matching basically this first part of the string directly, and then we're capturing... Uh, any characters or an underscore because someone had an underscore in their image name any amount of times and then a single period and then uh, a file extension which is either three or four characters um, I think it could just be lowercase but I included uppercase as well just in case and so again let's kind of read this capture group which is really important part you know first part is just saying find the location second part is saying and extract the name of the image the name of the image being any amount of characters or an underscore any amount of times, then a period, and then any amount of characters three or four times. 
And so, you know, uh, this stops for JPEG. We hit a quote. A quote is not a character, and so it stops there. And we can actually, you know, visualize it here. Um, the green is the capture group, and so we, we can just kind of visually inspect it and, and see that it's working pretty well. Um, so we make some other small changes. Again, since we're already regexing, we're going to end up doing both the image regex and the uh, name regex in the same exact function. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, the way our web page is served is it's dynamically loaded using JavaScript. And so what I'm actually going to do is save the HTML text to a file, and we're just going to read that file. Uh, there's ways to get around this using Selenium. That's not the focus of this lecture, so we're not going to worry about it. For readability, I've put these in a different file called util, and I've imported them. And so let's break this down uh, line by line. So first, an import statement for regex to use regex in Python. Next, we're defining this function. Right, basic stuff. Next, we're opening this text file and storing the text file, the HTML page, uh, into this text variable. Okay. Um, now, you know, for both the name and the images, we create. I love it when the headset turns off. We create our regex string again, just kind of copy and pasting from what we created over here. And we use, uh, in this situation, you know, we want to find all, and there's a ton of different regex functions. I googled regex, you know, get list of matching groups, and I found regex.findall does exactly that. And so we say regex.findall, uh, my regex, and then the text. Additionally, we'll do the same thing for images. This will give me a list of names and a list of the images that were found. And then if we think way back to Python 2, I want to say, uh, we'll do a dictionary comprehension, and we'll say names of i, uh, key is the name, value is the image, for i in range length names. And so we'll make a dictionary of name image pairs where, you know, a specific person's name uh, is tied to a specific image. And the reason we do this is for people like me, whose name, Eustace, is different than the image, which is William. Of course, my first name is William, my last name is Eustace. Um, I just go by different ones. Let's look at the uh, actual Flask uh, server.py as well. So what we'll do is we'll import Flask, import render template, import the uh, git lists and images that we just wrote in this other file, uh, create our app. Uh, again, we have this route with the variable route name. Why don't I play music in your headphones? Uh, because then there's music during lecture and I just feel like that can be a little bit distracting. Um, yeah, I, I can, I think, adjust it. I, I actually know uh, where to change that. So I think I kind of can do that. It's just a little bit of work. So we'll call this hello world function. And because we have this variable parameter, this is actually passed in as a parameter. We'll get the dictionary of people image uh, pairs. I print it for me. Um, and then if the name, you know, the URL that you're going to is in the keys, the names that we found on the web page, then we'll continue and we'll say uh, image URL is, you know, get get the actual image URL. And uh, I blocked this out for now because we don't want to worry about that for now. Else, uh, say that person's not on staff. So how do we pass the image and the name to the website? Again, using kind of the magic of templating, um, we pass variables directly to a web page instead of just executing, you know, things uh, as keyword arguments to the render template method. And so keyword arguments are, are this pattern here where you say name equals name, image equals image URL. Note that, you know, these two things can be different. They don't have to be the same. Then when we hop over to the HTML page, we can see, you know, image, which has been assigned to the value of image URL, uh, is the variable image. And so we can just call it image here. And uh, do note that I had to append kind of this, this prior URL uh, just because we weren't capturing that beforehand. Uh, basically the same thing with name is we just put name. Right, name equals name equals name. So uh, let's try it live. Nothing ever goes wrong. And so we'll go to the page here. This is the uh, splash page that you all didn't see me code, but I think is fun. Uh, and so I made it. It's an animated gradient and it's like 10 lines of code. Who would have thought, right? And so uh, give me your PM's name. Um, again, I do want to mention that the debugging homework has been made largely extra credit uh, because we know it's very hard. And we're also going to release solutions uh, and also, I think it's been extended. So lots of, we're, we're very lenient on this homework. Um, we're a lenient class though. So someone give me your PM's name and we'll uh, we'll go to their website. Well, first, I guess we'll just start with mine because why not? So this is me. This is the image pulled from the site. This is the name pulled from the site. Um, you know, I can do lowercase Eustace and it'll still work because we handle that. Um, you know, Matt, my co-instructor, boom, we just generated a web page for Matt. Jasmine. Okay. Welby, okay. Let's do it. 
Jasmine. Welby. Easy. Um, you know, there's some small stuff, like, if you look at Welby's image, it overlaps here a little bit. That's just because, like, I'm actually not very good at writing CSS. Uh, Jasmine's is probably a little bit too short, um, but... You know, that's not my fault. Um, well, it is my fault, but uh, front end was, you know, weeks ago, and so we're not going to worry about that anymore. So, yeah, you know, we can do Jasmine, we can do Welby, I'll throw Nick in there. I'm just kind of, I, I print out that list, and so I'm kind of just pulling names from that right now. Jeffrey, uh, it seems like Jeffrey doesn't have one. Is Isa, uh, you know, Emily, uh, my good friend Timothy, who uh, I have been grinding ECE391 with recently. Um, also, he made our bot, and so the poll bot is thanks to Timothy, or Tim. We'll look at Jonah, who's a co-PM with me. You know, we can look at uh, tons. So if you all have any suggestions, you know, we're, we're really dynamically generating these, and so it's kind of real, it's in our face. Um, and so, easy fix, fit and flexitive, yeah. I mean, there's, uh, yeah, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> we already did front end, and I'm uh, not going to get fancier with it, except for the... Uh, animated gradient that I spent probably too long building. But yeah, um, that's really kind of the, the... What, Matt? Are you kidding me? This is such high production quality. Look at this. <laughs> um, production quality plus plus, Matt. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess for these last kind of five minutes, I just kind of want to like sit here and answer questions and, and maybe brainstorm stuff that we may be able to do with... Uh, front end right um and so uh let's also kind of i want to walk through kind of the beginning to end of what's happening here and so we'll just uh get um yeah actually no we'll we'll stick with jonah it's jonah's lucky day and so what's happening here kind of from the beginning to the end well first we're making a git request an http git request to this url uh, you know, this goes out theoretically to the internet, or realistically, you know, this URL is the localhost URL, and so it goes to my own computer. But, you know, theoretically, it goes out to the entire internet. And if it was, you know, an actual uh, URL like this, that gets just, that gets resolved to an actual IP address, fun fact. And so it's really just uh, the same thing. We have a Git request for this, and then the server that's hosting that code uh, then goes and says, okay, uh, you know, what do I need to do for that URL? And so it goes here and it says, okay, well, you know, this person's going to a URL that matches this route. And so this is the function that I'm going to call. I'm going to pass this name function in. I'm going to go to the CS196 website, or rather, I guess, the text file, and I'm going to parse the uh, names and images from it. I'm going to check that the name that you just tried to visit is in, oh, actually, let's look at a name that's not in there. So I'll just say Jonah A, right, just to prove that that works. You know, we find the name and we find that it's in the people.dictionary.keys, right? Which is wonderful. And then we're actually getting the image of the URL from the web page that we scraped, right? Um, if we actually look, you know, we can uh, inspect element here. And we can see that the source of this image is actually the CS196 server. And so, you know, if we take this a step further, what's actually happening is the CS196 server is getting a GET request every time you load my web page. Right, I am getting this, uh, or rather, you are getting this directly from them, not from me. I'm not storing this on my server anywhere, which is kind of fun to think about. Um, and so we get the, it's piracy then, it's not piracy. Uh, we get the image URL, uh, and then we return that onto the web page as this, you know, keyword parameter that we pass on. Uh, we template these into the web page themselves using templating, which is a, a new thing that we just learned about. And all of that is done, you know, I mean, very quickly. Let's see how fast a refresh takes, shall we? So from beginning to end, this web page loads in uh, half a second, or 818 milliseconds. And 500 of those were the web page being stalled. So, you know. And we can even see, you know, some kind of events here. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, so we can see in this kind of section here, this is when we're actually uh, requesting that from the uh, eight, the uh, CS196 website. That's that little part right there. You can see it's a couple extra steps. 
you have to DNS lookup. So, you know, we look up the server for the CS196, we get that resolved down to an IP. We connect to the server, we uh, securely transfer the information and we download the content basically. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's, uh, you know, we've basically learned how to host a site from beginning to end. And, you know, while Flask may be more of a, a lightweight framework for hosting websites, it's by no means not powerful. I, I can think of several, um, you know, major companies that use Flask to host their entire website. Uh, I think Reddit uses it. Um, I'm sure there's more. I, I haven't really researched that before, though, so I can't think of it off the top of my head. But uh, if you all have any questions, um, feel free to say so now in chat. Um, I can do this. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you all for coming to front end, back end uh, number one. Uh, Thursday, we'll do back end number two. I have this really long project in Flask. And I always felt bad making in Flask. Don't feel bad. Flask is powerful. Flask is powerful. It's easy. It's powerful. It can do anything that anything else can do, basically. Okay, well, thank you all. Uh, it is it is uh, 7.50, so I guess I'll see you all on Thursday. Bye-bye.